pokes over the top and it snaps on it so it won't come out. This bolts out. This is a this is the fuel valve. These things are also in the bag. Don't you run a rack pack or like go around the bag? Yep. These are the heat shields. This stove needs these. Um, this one is, is optional. I usually use it. It goes underneath. It helps to reflect the heat up onto your pot, and it makes the uh, makes it a lot more efficient. Without these heat shields, this stove will burn, I don't know, maybe five times as much fuel as it as it needs when you use the heat shield. That, and then that goes on the inside of them, or not? This goes around the outside. This one is very important. Uh, this one is not optional. And the reason for that is because this stove puts out an awful lot of heat. And without this heat shield in place, it will heat up the, the fuel bottle. And then the fuel bottle would explode. The fuel bottle could explode if it heats up too much, especially if it's laying like that. So I usually lay it out here like this. And as far away this, as possible. This heat shield is not optional. Okay, now here's the extra step that liquid fuel stoves have the pressurized guys don't have to do. I'm going to open this valve all the way. This, the, way, the way this stove is set up is kind of weird. There are two fuel valves, this one and this one. So both of them have to be open to get any gas. And you can only see this if you're up close. You might want to come up and look at it real quick. I'm going to open this fuel valve and I'm going to let some of the fuel squirt into here and I'm not going to light it yet. I'm just going to let a bunch of fuel kind of puddle in the bottom of that thing. See the liquid in there? Yeah. I'm going to turn it off. Then I'm going to light that fuel. That's nice. Yeah. See, it only needs like a spark. This is the step that the, that the pressurized guys don't have to do. What we're, oh. doing, what we're doing here is we're preheating this stove before we turn it on. Right now, this is all off. So it's just burning that little bit that I dribbled in there. And, but it's preheating this thing so it's warm enough to operate. Yeah, that's brown Oh, cool. starts to go out, it's okay if it goes all the way out. Um, I usually try to catch it before it goes all the way out, because then I don't have to light it again. But once this flame dies all the way down, then it's warm. It's warm enough to light. That's what you want, is that blue flame. If it burns yellow, it's not hot enough, and you've got to go back and preheat it some more. Blue flame is really, really hot. The yellow flame is really is not very hot at all, and it'll put a bunch of soot on the bottom of your pot. So then you got to scrub your pot when you're done. That's really good. What's the hottest flame? thing on high for very long, that whole thing turns bright red. Oh, it's very hot. Um, safety it's stuff. So we talked about making sure the fuel bottle is safe. Um, obviously, this stuff all gets hot. Don't touch it. The, the heat shield gets hot pretty fast. Don't touch it. Uh, once it's once the stove's rocking and rolling. If you really got to do something with the heat shield, um, 
just take it like off completely for a second, let it cool. This rate this this cools off very fast. It's just very thin tin. Uh, but be careful once you've been cooking cooking over it. That that thing can be surprisingly hot. These little metal legs, since they're sticking into the fire, they get really hot. Obviously, the middle of it's very hot. Don't burn yourself. Um, the biggest danger with these, most people are able to keep that in their brain that this is hot. One of the biggest dangers that people have with uh, lightweight stoves is uh, they'll put like a big, a big eight quart pot, you know, one of our big black pots, oh, yeah. oh. on top of the stove, and the stove won't be sitting completely level. And there's nothing on this that can grab the pot. This is a, basically a smooth surface as far as that pot is concerned. If it's not completely level. And like you stir the liquid and the liquid's kind of sloshing a little bit. When you step back, you'll actually see the pot as the liquid sloshes. The pot will just kind of slide a little bit more and more and more off the edge of it. And eventually it can fall off. And a lot of backpacking stoves have a very small area to hold up the pot. Some of them are only this big. So it don't, doesn't take much sloshing at all. And it can fall over. Well, eight quarts of boiling water falling over if you're sitting right there, that's a problem. So you got to be careful with that. Especially if it falls on you. Yes. Okay.